Good evening. A little drizzly out there tonight, but that's all right. We can always use the rain uh, as long as the storms stay away. But in your hymn book, turn with me, please, to hymn number 296. 296, follow on. Down in the valley with my Savior I would go. I would go with my Savior wherever he leads. We'll stand as we sing all three verses. Down in the valley with my Savior I would go, where the flowers are blooming and the sweet waters flow. Everywhere he leads me I would follow, follow on, walking in his footsteps till the crown be won. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I would follow on, follow, follow, I would follow Jesus, everywhere he leads me, I would follow on, down in the valley with my Savior I would go, where the storms are sweeping and the dark waters flow, with his hand to lead me I will never, never fare. Danger cannot fright me if my Lord is near. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I would follow on, follow, follow, I would follow Jesus everywhere he leads. valley or up on the mountain steep. Close beside my Savior would my soul ever keep. He will lead me safely in the path that he has trod up to where they gather on the hills of God. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I would follow Father, we thank you so much that we know that as our Savior and as our Lord that we can follow you anywhere and that uh, not only do we follow you, but uh, you are always beside us. You are always there. Uh, all we have to do is reach out and, and uh, 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 be by your side. So, Father, keep us true. Keep us faithful. Uh, keep us so obedient to uh, what you've left us here to do. Father, we pray on behalf of the service. Now, tonight, I pray for each person that's here that uh, you would open our hearts to receive the words that you have for us through Pastor and that you would strengthen him, encourage him, and speak through him uh, with power and authority. Uh, now, we commit this service and we commit ourselves to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated and turn over to... Uh, Number 321, no, that's not right either, 311, 311, all for Jesus. We'll sing just the first and the last verses only, verses 1 and 4, all for Jesus, all for Jesus. All my being transcend power, all my thoughts and words and doings, all my days and all my hours, all for Jesus, all for Jesus, all my days and all my Glorious King of Kings, dines 
to call me his beloved. Let me rest beneath his wings. Oh, for Jesus, oh, for Jesus. Oh, rest me now beneath his wings. Oh, for Jesus, oh, for Jesus. Rest me now beneath his wings. Thank you for your good singing. Pastor? Amen. Welcome to the service tonight. Glad you could make it. I uh, hope that your day was going well so far. We pray that, pray that you have a good evening this evening. Thank you for joining us through live stream. And uh, we pray that the service would be a blessing to you. A uh, couple of things I wanted to share with you tonight. A couple of announcements. Uh, one is we had a great day working today, getting ready for our church yard sale tomorrow, and we're going to be liquidating a couple items. Uh, Brother Bob Stamper left some things when he went north. He has since uh, been established. He's doing well. Uh, he interacts every now and then on the church uh, messenger chat, so I see that. And I haven't spoken with him lately, uh, so pray for him if you would. Some of the things we're selling were things that belong to him, and so hopefully we'll be able to to sell them and send that money to be a blessing to him. Uh, so tomorrow morning, we're starting with the church yard sale, 8 o'clock, and we'll go until the afternoon. I'd originally said 3. I'm not sure. Um, maybe about that time, maybe a little bit sooner. Pray that we don't get rained out too much, okay? And that we can go ahead and get rid of some of the items that have been taken up space and storage. Um, and we'll see how that goes. So that'll be tomorrow, Friday, and then Saturday. Um, and if you're interested in helping one of those days, I need some helpers on Friday and probably Saturday. So I have helpers to watch the tables tomorrow, some Thursday in the afternoon. Uh, just get with me if you can. Uh, then also, tomorrow at 2 o'clock, we're going to go out canvassing, inviting some children to Vacation Bible School. Pray for that. And um, I'll have the teenagers wear some dog-proof leggings uh, in case we'll take them. In, no, I won't take them in the bad neighborhoods. Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to, to invite some children to Vacation Bible School. Pray for us. That's going to be the 12th through the 16th. 12th through the 16th. Those were the dates in my mind, but I didn't know if that was correct. Um, I don't have the flyer right here in front of me. We gave out some at the YMCA today. And uh, just pray that God would enable us to make contact with some children. You know, you, you want to, all the children to come that can. Uh, out of those that come, I pray that some come from families who they don't hear Christ, or maybe they don't go to church, and we can minister to their family. Just pray that it would be a good thing. Uh, so tomorrow we're going out. Meet here at the church at 2 o'clock if you'd like to go. We'll go out for two hours, and if we don't get rained out again. Um, so we'll go out, try to, try to hand out as many flyers as we can. Then Saturday morning, uh, we're having men's prayer breakfast at 830 and um, then ladies' Bible study after that. After prayer breakfast, I had a couple items we'd like to take care of, some housekeeping items here at the church, and um, just something we probably do every couple months, uh, kind of a work day, so if you're able to come out, that would be good. And um, then uh, also pray for me Saturday. I'll be driving over, taking Wesley with me to Wachula. Uh, there's a family that contacted me Sunday, and one of their family members died. They're, they're relatives of a family I used to minister to years ago over in Wachula. So anytime there's a funeral, uh, people are spiritually sensitive. And the gospel, it's a wonderful time to share the gospel, to bring the comfort that only God can bring. And um, so pray for me as, as we do that. Uh, I think that's it so far as announcements. Let's go ahead and continue singing. And then we'll talk about a couple prayer requests tonight. 321, 321 in your hymn book. We'll sing all three verses of Where He Leads, I'll Follow. <clears throat> Sweet are the promises, kind is the word, dearer far than any message man ever heard. Pure was the mind of Christ, sinless at sea, he the great example is and pattern for me. Where he 
I got notice this afternoon that uh, brother uh, the uh, Jeff and Judy Gillette. I don't know why that was so hard. I'm having trouble with that these days. I met a couple today, and I remembered the man's name and not the wife's name. Um, I can still remember my wife's name, so we're doing good. Jeff and Judy Gillette made it safely home, and so that's a good thing. Thank you for your prayers for them in travel. And um, I think that's it so far as our snowbirds, the rest of you, you're our summer crowd, and we're glad that you are here. Uh, I also had some good news from Melinda today. She called me and said that she was standing. They had her standing today. She's, she's, uh, they have her fitted on her leg uh, at the amputation. Staples are still in, haven't removed the staples, uh, but she's bound and determined to get back on her foot, on her feet. And so pray for her. Uh, she's going to be getting a prosthetic uh, uh, limb, and uh, she said, I'm going to be on, uh, I'm going to be on, she asked, she asked me today if I could find her a knee scooter, and so pray for her. We need to see if we can get a hold of some stuff for her, and, but she's, she's bound and determined to get going again. Uh, Crockett raised his hand, so he, he, Glade will build one for us. It, oh, okay, all right, does it, it works, okay, good. Hasn't, okay, hasn't worked on it yet. No gas engines on the knee scooter. Good. Praise the Lord for that. But uh, uh, praise the Lord for Melinda. She's healing, and that's, that's a blessing. That's an answer to prayer. Uh, also, I have two other good reports I wanted to share with you. One is from uh, the Halsteads. Brother Brent Halstead shared this with us, and I'll post this on the back bulletin board. You can take a look at it um, after this evening. It says, Dear Praying Friends, we're happy to announce the birth of our second grandchild and first granddaughter. So, uh, uh, Johanna already had a son, and now she has a daughter. So, Wesley is a uncle again, Uncle Wesley. Uh, Carolyn was able to be back in the States. She was here just for a couple days, not not too long ago. She came and visited Wesley Uh, So she could be back with our daughter, Johanna, for the birth of the baby. Her visit will continue for a number of weeks to assist Johanna in adjusting to mothering two children, and that is an adjustment. Uh, And then when you have three, you're outnumbered, right, parents, if you have three? Helping to care for and getting to know her grandchildren and enjoying being a grandmother. We're thankful to God for the safe delivery and health of this little one, and we pray for God to use her life to bring glory to God through salvation and service to Him. And so... There, there's, the picture will be posted back there. You can uh, check out their new grandbaby. And I love babies. They're so cute. I enjoyed my kids while they were babies, and now they're growing up, so I have to enjoy other people's babies. Um, 
This one, this is a letter from Zam Fang. He's a missionary to Myanmar, and he's sent out of Highlands Baptist Church in Lake Placid. Not one of our supported missionaries, uh, but he reports to us on a regular basis, and he knows Terry Donahue, our missionary to Myanmar and Burma. Uh, the Lord is good, as al- always to us. He's been leading us together in His works in Myanmar. We're doing good and really thankful to all of you praying and supporting us. So many lost souls could hear the good news. So Brother Zam is involved. He runs a children's home. He runs a, uh, he, he, he does mission work. Um, the Lord has been leading us into many places and works in the month of April and May. Thank God that many people could hear the salvation plan through gospel tracts, personal evangelism, home visitation, and church services. Thank God that in two months, 25 people came to know Christ in their personal lives, and many people could hear a clear salvation plan from the Lord. We've been starting a new soul-winning work in a new place where no Christians are. They are all idol worshipers. Over in Myanmar, where he's at, there's been quite a bit of political unrest. In fact, the compound that they're on has been attacked multiple times. He's had his motorcycle stolen. They've had their bicycles stolen, and he just keeps right on going. Um, He says of this new place where they're all idol worshipers, they were very receptive. We're praying to start a new church meeting also. Pray for us that we could proclaim the gospel boldly and people can be saved. In our Bible college ministry, the students new and old are arriving now, and we will be starting a new first semester again in the first week of June. Most of the old students are coming back from their various gospel ministries. Our orphans are doing good so far as well. Right now, they are in their enrollment of a school. We're leading and guiding them with the Word of God and Bible song every evening and in church Sunday schools. My family is doing good by the grace of God. All of my children are in their schools again. Again, thank you to all who are praying for us. Pray for your safety, health, and needs. It's interesting. Brother Zam sends me more uh, letters than even some of the missionaries we support. He's just faithful on and he, he really appreciates your prayers. I'll have this one posted as well, Zam Thang, and uh, do, do stop by there. Uh, check that out. Have a word of prayer for him, if you would. Let's go ahead and take out our prayer sheet, if you would, and we'll go over a couple of prayer requests tonight. I have a couple of reminders that I'll share with you, and then um, we could pass the microphone around. Brother Dave, could you help me with that? Could you help me with that, Brother Dave, when the time comes? Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I so appreciate Brother Dave Spangler. Yes, Cindy. Uh, Yes, I was going to ask prayer for Tommy. Um, So Tommy gave me a call today. Brother Tommy gave me a call today. He's in the hospital up in Winter Haven, and um, he said he should be out in a couple days, Um, and so they're taking care of him. He's not feeling well. Just pray for him if you would. Uh, Nothing super serious, um, but just, just, he always downplays everything. You know how that is. And uh, pray for Tommy Graham, though. Also, continue to pray for Melinda um, as she recovers. Uh, Pray for Rob. They're, they're in the Oaks together now. They are actually in the same room. And um, so they haven't been able to be in the same room, sleep in the same room, husband and wife. Now they're there, and they're, they've been missing each other. And um, it was kind of cute. I took a picture of Melinda. I said, can I take a picture of you for our church? And I shared it on the, video, on, on the chat group so that we could see, you know, she's doing well. And she says, well, I'm not sure. I don't think I look great. I, I don't know how I, I look. And Rob says, I think you look great. And because Rob is blind, he, you know, and, uh, and uh, so they, it was good. And I had prayer with both of them. Pray for them, though. It was, it's good that they can be together, encouraging one another and continuing to heal. Pray for Gary Gordon, Gary and Cheryl Gordon. Gary has not been well. He had, he had uh, uh, back surgery and he's laid up in a chair. He really wants to get out of the chair and walk, trying to go through therapy and, um, He's, he's struggling with, with it's, it's hard, it's discouraging, and so pray for him if you will. Pray for Marsha Banco, has some really bad days, 
Um, I, I went to visit her last week, couldn't make it. I think it was last week, and she was in such pain all day long. She, I called her. She said, it's better you don't come. And um, she's just in so much pain. So pray for Marsha Banco um, with severe migraine headaches. Um, pray for her. Continue to pray for Wayne and Cleo Mott. Um, she is having more bad days than good, coughing a lot, coughing up blood, inoperable cancer. Uh, it's terminal, and it's progressing quickly. They were hoping that after they started some chemotherapy that the cancer would kind of go into regression some. And last time I talked to Brother Wayne, he said that the doctors are not moving forward fast enough with getting treatment, and it's just really frustrating. So he's dealing with frustration. He's dealing with the emotional caring for his wife. She's dealing with physical. And pray for her if you would. Yes, ma'am. She does. She did, yeah, and last time I was with them, she was in good, good spirits. So you've seen them then out and about. Yeah. Good, good. Well, continue to pray for her. That's the hand of the Lord. That's great, God's grace. Amen. Continue to pray for Diana Ayers. Diana and Jerry are members here. Um, and Diana had cancer, had extensive, she had surgery and then had chemotherapy and then some radiation. Her treatment is over, but she's having a really tough time getting energy back to get going. Any little thing just wears her out. She, I, I talked with her just yesterday, and she kind of discouraged she said, I wish I could be there. She had wanted to come and help with the, with the a yard sale and so many things in ministry. She and Jerry served in ministry. He was, an assistant. he was an interim pastor, and there's just so many things she can't do, and it's really hard on her emotionally. So just the physical and then struggling with that. So please pray for her. Um, that would be really an encouragement for God to just lift both of them up and just, just encourage them. Pray for Simone Fielder having some car difficulties, and just a lot of different things weighing on her at the same time. Be in prayer for Vita. She and her family have been sick, and is this thing? Loose connection. All right. One of the kids hugged me and jerked on the wire earlier. That might even be what it is. I might have to, I got a loose wire. So pray for Vita, if you would. Uh, and then pray for Ashley, recovering from COVID, and she's over it, but she's really having trouble uh, with her energy um, getting going again. So a lot, lot to pray for and keep in mind. Any other prayer requests in the room tonight? Yes, Patty. Yeah, I just want to let you know that uh, I spoke to Melinda today, and she also said that uh, Rob might be going home, uh, back home on Saturday. Might be going home Saturday. Rob, yeah. Okay, all yeah. right, Rob might be. Praise God, that would yeah. be good. And I just need, uh, I got another praise. Uh, pray, uh, my sister got her voice back, Jackie. Uh -huh. She got her voice back, and the medicine they gave her a week and a half ago it took that long to work. Because one day she was praying to the Lord, and all of a sudden she heard her voice. She was so happy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's good. Thank you. Anybody else? Prayer request or praise? All right. <laughs> A question, all right. I, th I think I saw on Facebook that Gloria is in the hospital. Did I misread it or? Thank you for mentioning that. Okay, because you, you mentioned Ashley and all them. I kept waiting. Okay, so I didn't write that down. I that forgot. She has a, what, a blood clot in her leg, they think? or mm -hmm. No. No, Gloria still needs your prayers. Gloria Urbanowski had covid one of the side effects that COVID produces in some people is a blood clot in the lungs, and that's what she got. She got a blood clot in the lungs over the weekend. She went in on Sunday, and so went by, paid her a visit on Monday, had prayer with her. She was in the hospital. She was in good spirits. They stabilized her, and they sent her home. So she's home now, and so she is recovering, but pray for her because there's still some concern with that. Um, so she does appreciate your prayers. That was posted on our church prayer group, Gloria Urbanowski, but she is improving. Yes, yes. Monica. 
I, I want to ask a prayer for a friend of mine, um, Margo Holmes. She's an older lady. I think she's in her 80s now, but she just keeps writing Christian children's books, and Mandolin and I illustrate for her. She was in a bad accident um, over the weekend in, uh, on 66, and she's home, but just, you know, banged up. We pray for her. And also, Crockett and I both have a bad back this week, so pray for that. Okay. All right. But I do have a praise. I will be able to be here for VBS, so I'm thankful for that. Hey, that's good. Praise God. Back here in the back, uh, Mom. Um, Carrie called me. She thought you might be busy <laughs> and said that she couldn't come tonight. She needed to rest, but she'll be fine. She just said she was feeling just like she needed to rest tonight. So she was staying home and watching on, um, on uh, live stream. Amen. All right, good. Well, we do need to pray for Carrie Hirschberger. And uh, if you're watching on live stream, we love you, miss you. Hope you get some rest and join us again soon. So keep them in prayer. Yes, amen. Uh, Bob Johnston. friend of ours, like Bob Johnson, would talk about the other day, Mel Hahn, he did go home to be with the Lord, so just pray for his wife to give her okay. grace at this time. Friend of the Johnsons, Mel Hahn, we had prayed for him, he was mentioned, and he went home to be with the Lord, so his difficulties are over, but his family is going to be grieving. Be in prayer for Mel Hahn's wife. That also reminds me, be in prayer for D. Dunsford. Continue to pray for her. And those of you that reach out to her, continue to do that. Um, just being a friend, being close, and keeping that communication open. That's good. All right. Yes, Miss Janice, the, the mic is coming your way. We're going to give Brother Dave his exercise. My sister, Kathy, that we've been praying for, has her last chemo this Friday. She had the blood clots. She's very weak, but she's determined to get through this. And then uh, praying for Shirley and Gary. And uh, Shirley has her first appointment with Moffitt on Saturday. And so, and then she's, they're going to try and go up to Pennsylvania to see their family next week. And I'm going to be going up to Virginia, so traveling more seats for all of us. Okay. All right. Okay, keep these in mind. And um, others as well, please continue to let us know when the Lord gives answer to these prayers so we can rejoice with you. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Mm-hmm. And let's, let's uh, go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer, if you would bow with me. Lord, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for loving us. Dear Lord, thank you for the answers to prayer that have been given tonight. Uh, we thank you for bringing healing to Patty's sister, bringing healing to Melinda, uh, bringing healing to others that are here with us, uh, Gloria, uh, also Vita, uh, Ashley. And dear Lord, I, I pray that you would continue to work on behalf of those that are struggling with some of these chronic conditions. I do pray that you'd be with the Mots. I pray, God, that you'd um, uh, be with Miss Diana, who is uh, now recovering from treatment. But uh, God, just wrap your arms around her, draw her to yourself, give her strength. Lord, I pray also that you'd be with um, these others that are mentioned, Margot recovering from an accident. I pray, God, that you'd be with uh, Marcia and Gary. Dear Lord, both struggling with uh, just the effects of things that are frustratingly slow to heal from. I pray that you would bring healing. Uh, dear Lord, we, we trust you. We do believe that uh, you have the solution and the answer to our problem before we even encounter it. And God, I pray that uh, we would trust you. Draw us closer to yourself. Reveal in the midst of our struggle uh, the purpose and, and your grace and love. And uh, Lord, I pray that 
Uh, you would bring each one through their struggles more like yourself. Pour out your grace on them, even this evening. And thank you for the traveling mercies that you've provided to those. I think of the Gillettes. And dear Lord, I pray that you'd extend that to Miss Janice and her family as they travel. Be with Shirley and her sister Kathy. Be with us tonight, Lord, as we study your word. I thank you for your providence. And uh, Lord, I thank you for the truth. Speak to us this evening. In your name I pray. Amen. Go ahead and take your Bible, please. I want to just uh, spend a few minutes this evening going over uh, kind of a study. And I, I love how many times in my scheduling, I, I don't see it, but the Lord makes my schedule. And uh, I was, uh, I had talked with, um, I talked with a friend of mine who's a missionary to the Caribbean, and um, he was here in the area some, some time ago, uh, Brother Hester, a good man, and I said, why don't you come and present at our church this, this summer? So he says, okay, I'll come on the 4th, the 4th of uh, June. So I scheduled him for the 4th, and um, then some things happened this week, and we, we are working with the... Uh, um, We've got the yard sale going on, and I said, oh, no, that's the only week that that's going to work, but that's got men's prayer breakfast. And then I got a phone call on Sunday, and they said, hey, um, we'd like you to come preach uh, a funeral for one of our family members, and that's going to be on Saturday. And I said, my goodness, this weekend is just filling up. What am I going to do? And then I remembered, God brought me a preacher for Sunday. So I'll be teaching Sunday school class. He'll be preaching the morning service. The Lord lined it up far, far ahead of time. I had no idea the schedule would fill up this way on the weekend. Um, but God did. And, you know, we can, we can trust Him. I hope you feel like you can trust Him tonight. I'm going to be talking about an area where we really need to trust God. It's an area that you and I, as we sit here tonight, have not experienced yet. We've not experienced death. We look at Scripture, we take God's Word on it, but I haven't died before. I don't know what it's like. I've never done that. I'm going to be talking with a family tomorrow. One of their family members died. I can't tell them, hey, I've done this, let me tell you about it. But I can tell them, hey, God's Word has the answers. Are you thankful for that? I've been reading through Psalm 119 in my morning Bible reading, and, and some of the things that the psalmist said, David says, I understand more than the ancients because I love thy law. I don't have to live to be 100 years old to have the wisdom accumulated. I can read God's Word, and there's far more than 100 years of wisdom in God's Word. Aren't you thankful for that? The question is, what happens when the body stops breathing? Some people have that question. You know, there's a lot of bad theology out there about that. People have all kinds of ideas. Ironically, sometimes the people that are the most dogmatic about it are people who have never cracked the Bible open, but they know more than the Apostle Paul about what happens when you die, right? Some people say, oh, you become an angel, or you cease to exist. Uh, you're reincarnated. You know, you're like a ripple. You just get back into you know, like a stone and the ripple, and I'm thankful I'm not a ripple tonight. You re-enter the energy of the universe, and some people say we can't really know. Well, friend, I believe that Hebrews chapter 11 says, by faith we understand. I wasn't here when the world was formed, but by faith we understand that the worlds were formed by the Word of God. By faith we understand some things that God tells us, and so we can trust Him. Not only does the Bible tell you what will happen after you die, it teaches you that you have control over what will happen after you die. And that's a wonderful thing. And, and, and so, if you will, just for a few minutes tonight, let's look at a couple of these things. Take your Bible and turn over to Genesis chapter 1. I love to remind people that though death is a horrible thing, though the separation you experience is a terrible thing, and sorrow, and, and sickness, those are all negative things. I love to remind them that that is not God's plan, that God did not do that. Now, you might be sitting there and saying, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, sometimes we have a tendency to blame God. That's our natural tendency. If there is a God, He must be responsible. When the reality is that God did not create death to be part of this creation. He created a perfect world. Look at 
uh, verse 27 of Genesis chapter 1. God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he him, them, in the image of God. God, cre- God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. This was in the Garden of Eden. So man and woman both created in the image of God. Therefore, the image of God is not primarily physical. It has to do with man's um, innate substance and, and character and what we are, body, soul, and spirit. God blessed him and said unto him, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. So God gave them life. God commanded them to continue and multiply in life and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God gave man the responsibility to be the manager of his creation. God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, every tree, and which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. God gave him food. In fact, as it writes here, it almost seems like God made everything to be a blessing to man, which is ironic because modern scientists teach that the earth is pristine and that man is the invader and man is almost like a virus, right? That's completely unbiblical. It's satanic in origin. The Bible teaches God created man, put him here to enjoy it. Those things are here for our meat. And every beast of the earth, every fowl of the air, to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very... What's that word, church? Good. Death did not exist. Evening and the morning were the sixth day. Pastor, where did death then come from? These these beings, death was not part of reality, and they were created to live forever. God gave them only one law. Chapter 2, verse 16, the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Pastor, what kind of fruit was it? The fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. There isn't one today. There was only one tree like it. I think it was a grape. I think it was an apple. I think... It was none of those. We have those. We call them grapes and apples. It was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Thou shalt not eat of it. Only one. That's it. Don't touch it. Don't eat of it. That's my law. The day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely... What's that word? Death was not a part. Death entered by sin. For as by one man, sin entered the world. And death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We know the story. We know the reality. The penalty for breaking that one law would be death. And when Adam broke that one law, he gave in to temptation. Eve saw, she looked, she lusted, she tasted, she broke the law, gave to her husband Adam, he doing so with full knowledge of the law. The Bible says that Eve was not in transgression as much as Adam, for she was deceived, but Adam knew and he took. By the way, The way it reads, Adam was given the law, he passed it on to Eve. Adam broke that. And therefore he was expelled from the Garden of Eden, lest he take of the tree of life. He experienced death of that relationship, death of his circumstances, and began to die so that one day he physically would finish the process of dying and his body would die. Genesis 3.17 says, Adam, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife and eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, thou shalt, not, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Creation is going to start to rebel. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Your work will now be labor. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. Uh, Brother Scott and I were working today. That sweat we felt, that's Adam's fault. Till thou return to the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, to the dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. That's in a lot of funerals now, because we know this body one day will die. Death exists because Adam sinned, and as his children, we inherited the sin nature. Uh, That's called, um, we, we inherited that from him. As Adam's children, we were born sinners. We will one day too die. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, you and me. 
and the wages of sin is death. Where did death come from? Did God create it? No. He told man, don't do this. Man sinned, and sin's penalty is death. What happens at death? Well, when the body dies, you as a person continue, I believe, to be conscious. Where do you get that from, Pastor? Take your Bible and turn to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 16. There are some things that are hereditary, hereditary characteristics and traits. Some of them are physical. Your children tend to look like you. Some of them are not physical. Your children, they have an imprint of your soul. They have your sense of humor. They kind of act like you, and some of that's not learned. It's in their soul. You didn't teach them some of those things that they do. Believe me, you're like, why are they doing that? I didn't teach them. You didn't have to. Some of the things you wish you could not, you know, unteach them. One of the things that's hereditary is the sin nature. It's passed down as well. And because of that, we all die. And at death, people would say, what happens? You know, some people teach soul sleep, and some people teach or understand some other things. Jesus said of the, of the girl, she sleepeth. Well, the body sleeps, the soul does not. Luke 16, look at verse 19. Notice what it says here. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. Now, some people say, well, this is a parable. This is not a true story. Um, And so, you know, we have to be careful interpreting it as a parable. And I believe it was not a parable, but even if it is a parable, what is it teaching? It's pretty clear what it's teaching. Just take it at face value. So Lazarus was there. He, he did not fare well in this life. He suffered in this life, desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Those were the only friends he had. It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, fully conscious, being in torments. And seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. Now he is comforted and thou tormented. Now this is not a doctrine that teaches that rich people all go to hell, and somehow if you're poor and suffer in this life, that somehow you'll go to heaven. It's not what this is teaching, but it is teaching about the suffering of hell, and it is teaching that about regardless of how this life is, even if you suffer in this life, when you go to the next, if you have a relationship with God, suffering ends. Besides all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence could, cannot, neither can they pass to us which would come from thence. So we see some things. Both the rich man and Lazarus died physically. Both the rich man and Lazarus were conscious after death. You know what that teaches us? That you are more than a body. Your body will die, but you will be awake and alert somewhere. Those in hell feel real pain and flames. Those in hell are separated from others, and those in hell do not get a second chance. Those in paradise... Look at verse 25, he was comforted. Lazarus now is comforted. Thou art tormented. What is hell, pastor? Well, hell is a place of fire and torment designed for the devil and his fallen angels, Isaiah 14 says. Isaiah 14 puts it this way. I don't have that copied, so I'm going to turn there. I don't know, is that up there? Oh, okay. Some of these. I'm going to go ahead and turn there. So Isaiah 14, look at verse 12 through 15. This is a prophecy in the Old Testament, a sort of dual fulfillment here. Speaking, I believe, of Lucifer, Satan, 
Isaiah 14, look at verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art... How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mountains of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. We believe that's speaking of Satan's original desire to take over heaven. He lied to himself and took one third of the heavenly host with him. He deceived them. By the way, if he could deceive angels that were in the very presence of God, that's a pretty strong deceiver. You don't stand a match for him, okay? That's why the scripture says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Don't think you're going to wrestle with him and go toe to toe with the devil. Don't do that. Draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh unto you. As he thought he could do that, verse 15, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. That's what it was designed for, for the devil and his angels. God created all things good, and one of God's angels, an archangel, Lucifer, son of the morning, determined in his heart that he wanted to be greater than God. He believed he could overthrow God, even convinced one-third of the angels to rebel. And so God judged him and threw them from heaven. Revelation 12, speaking of this, Uh, In the past tense, it's looking back as the Apostle John writes it. With his tail, he drew a third part of the stars of heaven, this, this great dragon, Satan, and did cast them to the earth and was dragged and stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered. It's speaking, spreading, this is a, a kind of, Uh, story spreading uh, across millennia here in Revelation 12, but it talks about the third part of the stars from heaven, symbolically speaking of the fallen angels. Hell was designed to be a place of torment for them. Matthew 25 says, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Well, then why do people go to hell? In fact, some people who believe or read the Bible They say, I don't like the doctrine of hell, so they either write their own Bible or they create their own theology where they say, well, I don't believe in hell, or I believe people go and they suffer and then they just burned up. Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that hell is eternal. They don't like it. They don't like it. So the guy just deleted it from the Bible, you know. There are some people like that. If you don't like things in the Bible, just write your own Bible. That's why there's a lot of new Bibles out there. Be careful, all right? Not all of them or for that reason, but be careful. Well, here's the reality. God never intended for people to go there, but when Adam sinned, he followed Satan's advice and not God's, and so he wasn't following God. He was following whom? Satan. He was a liar from the beginning, abode not in the truth. When he, when he speaketh, he speaketh a lie, for he is a liar and the father of it, John eight forty four. When Adam did that, he aligned himself with Satan, and his sin, obedience to Satan, deserved the same fate, which was death, and so the wages of sin is death. Pastor, does, is there ever a chance for people to get out of hell? Does the suffering ever stop? No and yes. The suffering never stops, but yes, there is a chance to get out. When is that? Well, at the end of the world, Christ will rule from a throne for a thousand years. During that time, Satan will be chained in the bottomless pit, unable to tempt people, and at the end, he will be loosed. The final judgment will take place at that end. All sin will be judged as well. And the Bible says that death and hell gave up those which were in them, and they were judged at the great white throne. And all men were judged according to their works. You know, the only people judged according to their works are those who are already in hell. And you know what they're going to be found? Guilty. Revelation chapter 20 says this, and it says they will be cast into the lake of fire. In fact, take your Bible and turn there, Revelation chapter 20. Verse 11 I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the, heaven, the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. I saw the dead, small, and great stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. They're not in the book of life. They're judged according to their works. All are found sinners, and the wages of sin is? 
And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and every and they were judged every man according to their works. The sea gave up the body, hell gave up the soul. They were joined together. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Pastor, that's not good. Yeah, I know that's not good, but I have hope tonight. Do people have to go to hell? No, they do not. But the time to make that decision is in this life. And just as sin brought death, Christ through His sacrifice brought salvation and an opportunity to be saved from that. His gift to us is eternal life. That's why I love Romans 6.23, because it gives us both truths. For the wages of sin is death. You're born facing a death sentence. But, but... The gift of God is eternal life. Through whom, church? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The opposite of death is not just life, it's eternal life. When someone hears the gospel of Christ, they can choose to hear it and to trust it and believe it. Paul says in Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to Everyone that believeth. What's the gospel? Well, the gospel is simply this. In 1 Corinthians 15, it says that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The word gospel means good news. And here it's speaking of a very specific good news message that God in the flesh came, lived a perfect life, fulfilled the law completely of which none of us could do, died on the cross paying for the sins of all mankind. Not just a select few, not just some that God selected, but rather it says He's the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Everyone. And then He rose again. Are you thankful for that? Dying on the cross, He paid for our penalty. Rising from the grave, He can give us eternal life. And so not only can I receive forgiveness... I need more than forgiveness to go to heaven, by the way. I need, I need God's righteousness. Jesus told the Pharisees, He said, Except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. And so some people have the idea, if I'm not as bad as other people, somehow I'll get there. Well, number one, you're still a sinner. Number two, you're a far cry from that righteous. I'm thankful Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I love that. Well, pastor, then how does someone go from not believing and then they hear this, this I had a man say, well, well, people just live so far away from that truth that's not in their mindset. How do you really expect them to be able to believe a truth that you're telling them about a person they've never met. You know, where my, you know how I believe that? Because God says it. See, the Bible says in Isaiah 55, 11, He says, My word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that whither to I send it. God's power ac- accompanies His word. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 32, He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. He spake this concerning the death that He would die. Was Jesus crucified? Yes. So is God drawing men to Himself? And so if we give them His Word, can it awaken faith that they might respond to the gospel? Yeah. See, When someone does that, several things happen. Number one, they're born as a child of God. Jesus said to Nicodemus, he said, unless you be born again. I'm not talking about, and and then Nicodemus said, how can a man be born again when he's old? He said, you have to be born of water and of the Spirit. You have to be born the first time and the second time. Well, how does the second birth take place? Well, it happens when you accept the truth of God's Word. 1 Peter 1.23 ports it this way. It says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. First time you were, you were born, you were born of the seed of man, which is corruptible. Our bodies grow old and die. 
1 Peter 1, 23 says, not of that. That's not how you were born again. But by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And when you accept that word by faith, it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration. When you are regenerated, you are washed. And the renewing of the Holy Ghost, when you, the Holy Ghost does a work inside you, it, you are renewed. When you're born again, you're given new life, just like that baby. When a baby comes into, when it's conceived in the, in the womb, that's life at conception. And nine months later, when the birth takes place and it breathes a breath of air, physical life is confirmed. At spiritual birth, you receive spiritual life. I love what Ephesians chapter 2 says. It says, you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Not physically dead, but spiritually dead. So pastor, do people have to go to hell? No, they can accept the gospel And they can be born again. When you're born again, you receive something. The life you have, the spiritual life, is eternal life, the Bible says it. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have what, church? At what point do you receive everlasting life? When you get saved. The moment you get saved. So it's not as if you get saved and you're waiting to receive eternal life when you die, you receive it when you get saved. Christ said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly so that the path of the just, one who walks with God, is to be perfect. The path of the just is to be more and more clear unto the perfect day. See, if we never die, then what happens to our body? Well, when the body dies, you continue living. You're not a body tonight. Aren't you glad for that? Some of our bodies are not working too well anymore. These old things are rebelling and we're getting new parts or losing old parts or whatever, you know. If this were a car, I'd trade it in, some of you say. Guess what? You get to. Aren't you glad for that? You're not a body. It just carries around your soul and spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, take your Bible and turn there i got one or two scriptures to turn with, and we hope we'll, we're getting right close to closing. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. See, the first part of the message is pretty doom and gloom. It's judgment, but I'm thankful that there's hope in Christ, aren't you? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse 6. Now he that wrought us for the selfsame thing as God, who has given us the earnest of the Spirit... Earnest is a down payment. It's the, it's the seal of our salvation. The way that I know that I'm saved, the assurance that I have of salvation, is an internal awareness and assurance provided by the Holy Spirit who, who speaks to me with the Word of God. We know we're the children of God. Therefore, we're always confident. How do I get that confidence? Well, as I'm in God's Word, God's Spirit gives me that. And we're confident. Knowing that while we're at home in the body, and I love the way the Scripture talks about it, I am in the body. This is not me. We're absent from the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. I've never been there. I haven't died yet, but I believe this because I believe God's Word. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And how many would say amen at that? Amen. Amen. What do we look like in heaven? Well, huh. I think you'll look pretty much close to where you look here. Really, Pastor? Yeah, just a better version, okay? The perfect version of who you are here. Where do you get that? Well, Jesus, after his resurrection, looked like himself. They knew who he was. The people that knew him, he looked like him. He didn't look like some glowing orb or some guy radiating. He looked like a person. In fact, the two men on the road to Emmaus, they just thought some guy joined him. And they talked with him and they walked with him and they enjoyed his company and he preached to them. And they probably thought, man, this guy's a good preacher. And when they started to eat, then it was revealed. But his body wasn't limited by this plane of physical existence. It wasn't limited by being touched by death. 
Philippians chapter 3, verse 21 says, Of God, who will change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body, according to the working whereby He is able to subdue all things to Himself. Pastor, I'm just not sure how that's going to work out. Are you willing to leave it in God's hands? I confess, I'm not sure of all of that either. I haven't done it yet. But I have faith. What happens after we die? Well, if you don't know Christ, it's not a good thing. You can know Him tonight. If you're following us online and you've never received Christ as your Savior, if you believe that He's God and died for your sins and rose again, you can pray right there to receive Him and He'll save you. You can tonight here. If you have received Him, then your home's in heaven. We talked about that last Sunday night. And it just keeps better. One day, this is why I've had to recalibrate the way I talk about death sometimes at funerals. Because the person is with the Lord one second after they breathe their last. They breathe their first in heaven. They're with the Lord. The person, what did, what did Jesus say? He said, God is not the God of the dead. He is God of the... Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are living. So when we talk about our loved ones, it may be odd for other people, but even our past loved ones are living if they're with the Lord. They are still living. In fact, they're more alive now than they ever were. Comfort one another with these words. Let's have a word of prayer tonight. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. I thank you for loving us. I thank you for these truths. I pray, God, that you would help us to walk in light of this truth. Help us as we seek to to be changed by these. Help us as we share the truth. Thank you again for this evening. In your name I pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet, heads bowed and eyes closed? Maybe just take a minute this evening to ponder on what we've heard. If God has spoken to your heart, do business with God. Maybe, Maybe thank the Lord for what He's done in your life. Are you glad you're saved tonight? I hope you can say that. Brother Sam, would you close us in a word of prayer this evening, after which you'll be dismissed? 